Welcome everyone. Today's something a little bit different. We're going to take a look at Simulation Craft, and this is just a sort of simulation program for World of Warcraft. You can input your characters, and it's going to run various iterations of simulations for you to calculate things like your DPS and your your stat plots and weightings and so on. It's a really powerful tool, but I know some people get kind of apprehensive about using it because they have this impression that it's very complex to use or it's something for only, say, like high-end guilds or so on and so forth. But the reality is it's kind of simple to get into it and you can do quite a lot. So firstly, you're going to want to download the program. You can see the URL and the bar here at the top. Simple matter of going here and clicking on the installer link. Once you've got that, just save it on your PC and you can run the installer from there. So I started up the program now. Here we are on the main homepage. There are various sort of navigation bits here where you can sort of see frequently asked questions, you know, tips and tricks, general helping and how to get around. But what we want to look for at the top here is the options tab. Now you can see there's a lot of options here, but some of the ones that we need to be concerned with are these basic ones. There is the armory region option here. It's important to make sure you select EU if you're on EU or like US and you know Chinese, Korean, it's just make sure you're on the right one so you can actually find your character because that can sort of lead you to a different character if you're in the wrong region. You want to make sure the armory spec is set to your active spec. You don't want it using any of the inactive ones. So if you're looking to sim your character, make sure you log out on the appropriate spec. One of the important options here is the iterations options. And this is just how many times the simulation is going to run. I think it defaults at around like a thousand, but I like to bump that up to just 50,000. It gives you a much better average of looking at things. You get like a much wider distribution. You can find out better and more accurate means. And generally the more iterations you have, the better. Although if you go too high, then you know, your processing power starts to play a big role in this and it takes a long time to calculate this. You can vary stuff like the length of the fight. I've got it set here to five minutes as the default, but there's a, a variable here that can go plus or minus 20% just to give you a bit more of a spread in the data. Different fight types, standards patchwork, which is just standstill and DPS. So we'll just stick with that for a moment. All the rest of these options you can see, you can configure these, tweak them all you like, get the sort of exact simulation that you desire. Number of enemies, target level for sort of crit rating purposes and all that, but generally the basic ones are where you want to look and make sure all those are set correctly. Okay, next thing we want to do is have a look at this import tab. Now you can either import just by putting in your name of the realm and the name of the character here, or you can import through Battle.net with this sort of mini browser that's in here. There's also a bunch of sample profiles that work, um, but generally you want to be simming your own character. So I've got my realm already set to Neptune on here, that's where I play. So I'm going to put in the name of my mage character, click import after that, and it's going to import all of this code here. This looks a bit confusing, but it's pretty straightforward. All this really is, is the sort of priority list for all of your spells and skills. So this is just telling you basically what the simulation is going to do, all these different variables. And then at the bottom, you've got all the bits with your gear and a summary of your gear in the notes, just so you can see what it all adds up to. Okay, so once we've imported the character, we want to click on this Simulate button here. And depending on the number of iterations you've chosen, you can be waiting a little bit of time or a lot of time. You can see with 50,000, it doesn't really take too long. Uh, obviously more takes longer, and if you start doing stuff like calculating plots and stat weights, it's going to take even longer. But fortunately, we're just doing a basic one at the moment, so it should be done soon. So here we are at the final page of this, and you can see we've just got our results thrown out at us here. At the very top here, we have an average DPS number. You can see it's about 215k, which doesn't seem too far off the mark for a mage about my gear level. Um, a lot more information, just tells us all the talents we got selected. We can see the sort of damage over time and a graph. You can clearly tell that these spikes are where combustion is used, and then the small humps here or where the Ignite just continued to tick over. Nice graphs here, shows us all our damage sources. We can see Pyroblast is our major damage source here, along with the Ignite that comes with it. And this is where the iterations come into play here, this DPS distribution chart. 
You can see on the lowest iteration, I only pulled 181k DPS, or on the max iteration, I pulled 275k. Yeah, it's quite a spread, so you can see why getting a wide, wide data set is important for this, because you want to be looking at this average. This was the one that occurred most often in 3,585 iterations, was in this sort of DPS number. So we can assume that to be a safe bet, whereas all the ones trailing off down here are much less likely. You can see only like 10 iterations and 12 iterations were hitting 250k plus, so you can't really bank on that ever happening. More information down here, you can see what we spent most time using. You know, a large portion of our time here was just spent spamming fireball, and then like instant pyroblasts and so on. Some of the information you might not need to use, but it's good just to know that it's there and know you get access to it. Okay, so next you might be thinking, how do I test if an item's an upgrade for me? So a good way to do this is if we scroll down to here, we can see we have all of our items here in the code. And there's a good way we can generate these codes. So you'll notice right now, the two rings I have are Band of the Worm Matron and Cursed Warden's Keepsake. Now the ID from these is just the basic item ID which is just a, a number that signifies what the item is. When all these items are stored in the database, they're just stored as a number rather than the actual full name. The bonus ID indicates things like the number of item level upgrades on the item, or if it has a socket or not. Various things like that, just small bonuses on it, like tertiary stats, so on and so forth. So what we can do, if we want to change those, is we can go to Wowheads here, and say I want to check if the Shard of the Exodar it's going to increase my mage DPS. So I just put in the name of the item here. Here it is in the search. And uh, that's the mage ring. Strangely, while head doesn't display the socket that it's supposed to have, but there's supposed to be a socket here. Okay, so at the top in the URL, we can see that this is the item ID. It's 132410. So we can just copy that number there. And as we go back to SimCraft, we can take this finger one, and say we want to get rid of that entirely. And we want Shard of the Exodar. put in the full name like this, all the spaces should be underscored and then you've got a comma and ID equals and we can paste in the ID and there's no bonus ID because Shard of the Exodar is at a fixed item level and doesn't have any upgrades. So just by changing this we've replaced our first ring with this shard instead. Now let's say I also want to change my mage's talents. Scrolling right back up to the top here we can see there's a line for talents, and this points to the Blizzard talent calculator. So if I copy this, and when pasted into my web browser, we get the talent set up for my mage. So let's say I want to change Living Bomb to Unstable Magic, I want Kindling instead of Cinderstorm, and I want Pyromaniac instead of Conflag. All those have been changed, the URL up here should update. We just copy this out again. Go back to SimCraft and we replace this original talent URL with the new one. So we've replaced our talents with new stuff and we've replaced our terrible ring with this Shard of the Exodar. So we can simulate this with the new stuff. So here we are on our next results page. You can see our DPS number immediately has changed. This time it's around 229k. The previous one was around 215, so there's a, a notable increase in DPS there by changing talents and changing to Shard of the Exodar. Everything else has changed here. We'll notice that the talent bit here is updated to reflect our changes, and generally it's all the same information. You can see, however, we have a strange outlier in DPS here. It's pointing at about 312k as a top result, which seems way out of the expected range. This again, just a good reason why we have the DPS iterations, so we can safely discard this and realize that the ones closer to the middle 
are the more realistic approach to what we're expected to get. So thanks for watching this sort of beginner's guide to how to use SimCraft. There are a lot more options than what I've covered, this is just the very very basics on how to sim your character and how to sort of look at different items and see what they do for you. Again if you're using this just delve into some of the options, figure out what you can do, it's very very powerful, there's a lot of options available to you and you can do a whole lot just to exactly figure out what's going on. Thanks for watching and good luck.